Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okie dokie. And there we are. Nice. <laughs> okay, hello world. My name is Don, and you're watching Showcase for the week ending Sunday, August 21st, 2022. Stop the presses. This is our Sunday show, and that means weird headlines plus your live chat comments. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me tonight. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. And uh, I'll be happy to read off some of your comments live on air. And maybe even show them on screen, actually. Don't forget, we're using a brand new streaming interface now. So, oh, hang on a second. Let me go ahead and switch this around a little bit for y'all. Oh, nope. Ah, there we are. Oh, well, mm, Instagram feed is a little bit all over the place right now. Sorry about that. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll just leave this here for now. Um, so like I was saying, we have a brand new streaming interface tonight. We're still sort of ironing out the kinks with it. But uh, basically, we're able to stream on YouTube, in, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter all at the same time. Comment to us from anywhere, and we'll be able to show it on screen. And we're also trying to push out a new simplified website here, a little mini site, basically, while our main page is being put together. Linktree, link tr linktr.ee slash weekend showcase. You can check out all of our content uh, from the past year, basically. Our live streams right now, where you can pick up the live stream there, the Twitch version, and a podcast and a contact us form, all sorts of cool stuff is on that. So that's at Linktree. The link is scrolling at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, if you want to go ahead and take a closer look at that as we go on. So let's go ahead and get started with some weird news headlines. You ready to get started? Let's go. So first item on the docket tonight, we have from the mirror, mirror.co.uk. Uh, here we are. A hungover woman finds herself on Google Maps and gets compared to Ozzy Osbourne. Okay, this system is not cooperating. There we go. So this is a uh, this is one of those things where you ever have one of those sort of circumstances where, uh, like you you go out for you go out to like enjoy the nightlife on the weekend. You've had a long rough night week week at the office, let's say, and you want to try to relax, decompress, whatever, and one thing leads to another. Next thing you know, it's the next morning. What on earth happened last night? And then come to find out you can find yourself on Google. Google knows where you were. It's like, I can imagine the anxiety that must hit in waves with, oh my God, what, what did I do last night? How much does, how much information about me is stored in the cloud? How much photographic evidence? You know what I'm saying? I can imagine that can be really nerve wracking depending on where you went the previous night. Uh, here we go. This is posted by the mirror uh, about three days ago, two days ago. Sorry. Uh, eight, three days ago. Sorry. Wow. It's my first time counting. I'll get the hang of it one day. Um, so this is the story starts off. If you're feeling hungover after one too many the night before, the last thing you need is any public attention, particularly if your physical state is reflected in your rather disheveled appearance. We've all been there, feeling fragile with a sore head, wanting to curl up on the sofa with a takeaway, blah, 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 blah. Let me just skip ahead a little bit here. After curiously browsing on Google Maps one day, the young woman who posts under the handle at Xmanda, X, X-M-A-N-D-A-H-X on TikTok, stumbled across multiple photos of herself on the platform. Posting the hilarious snaps onto TikTok, she admits to being hungover when the satellite images were taken, and it's safe to say she wasn't prepared to be photographed. The photos show the woman wearing a lilac-colored tracksuit paired with fluffy slippers and socks, a signature outfit for anyone battling a hangover. Standing outside of the street, the TikTok user looks rather sheepish while holding a carrier bag full of food. As the caption on the clip reads, quote, finding myself on Google Maps collecting a takeaway, end quote. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, hmm. This is broad daylight, though. I don't know what to make of this, honestly, because it's like one of those things where, like I was saying a moment ago, if this is just the sort of thing that happens sort of late at night, that's one thing. But uh, I don't know how rough your previous night had to have been to be to have like your in a daysness basically sort of bleed over into the following morning. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about that. Um, anyway, what's the craziest sort of uh, night before story that that y'all can remember <laughs> like this far removed from it? Um, like, hey, post a comment and maybe share a little bit of a, a little bit of the story within reason, if you feel like it. Um, and we can show it on screen and maybe develop a little bit of a, a little back and forth on it a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. But anyway, let's move on. Next topic. We're just going to roll through this as quickly as possible here. This next topic is from Associated Press. 
monkey business behind 911 call from California Zoo. This is from Associated Press, published four days ago, August 17. I remember seeing something about this on Instagram, actually, the other day. I didn't really read too much far into it, but um, too much farther into it, I should say. But uh, hey, let's take a closer look here. This is, uh, okay, the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office believes it was a little capuchin monkey that called 911 from a zoo last Saturday night. <laughs> Help, I'm all out of bananas! Like, <laughs> I can imagine that's probably what that was. The call disconnected and dispatchers tried to call and text back. Well, obviously, like, the monkey can't talk. That's just, you know, I'm just joking. Anyway, the call disconnected and dispatchers tried to call and text back, but there was no response. So deputies were sent to investigate, the office said in a social media post. The address turned out to be the Zoo to You near Paso Robles. Probably pronouncing that wrong, sorry. But the deputies found that no one there made the call. They finally deduced that a capuchin monkey named Route, Root, R-O-U-T-E, depending on your regional dialect, I guess that pronunciation can go either way, had apparently picked up the zoo's cell phone, which was in a golf cart used to move about the property. Mm. The office's post said, quote, We're told capuchin monkeys are very inquisitive and will grab anything and everything and just start pushing buttons. <laughs> well, hey, <sighs> good grief. I guess it was, uh, I guess it was either pocket or deliberately, well, not deliberately, but accidentally dial 911 or generate a lot of really expensive in-app microtransaction payments on like whatever games were installed on the phone. Cause you know, you know, there had to have been something like, you know, Candy Crush. I don't know. Bejeweled. Do people still play Bejeweled? I don't know. Like installed on the phone. And you know, those things are prone to, prone to microtransactions. And unless you have some very specific, you know, purchase safeguards in place, you know, like a pin on your account. Yeah. Unauthorized purchases can happen. And it's not going to be enough to just say, Hey, a monkey paid for that in my name while I was at work and I had my back turned. I don't think that's really going to fly, but anyway, hey, crazier things have happened, I guess, and apparently this actually made national news, so there you go. Anyway, once again, you're watching Weekend Showcase Weird News Live. Thanks so much for tuning in on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter <laughs> at Weekend Showcase. Thanks so much for tuning in, spending a little time with me. My name is Don. Feel free to drop a comment, uh, drop a like, and we'll, we'll be happy to post some of your comments live on air, like, uh, here's something from Brain Spaz. Uh, even a monkey can figure out how to use a cell phone, sort of. Pretty funny. He played with it for a second, then ran from the scene of his crime, LOL. Yeah, that's probably a, that's a slightly funnier way to phrase that, I gotta say. Thanks, Brain Spaz, for the feedback. Uh, let's move on. Next item on the docket. This is from CBS News. We're rolling right along here. This was posted yesterday. Report, Ethiopian Airlines pilots fell asleep during a flight and missed their landing. Oh my god, this could easily have gone the other way. Two pilots for Ethiopian Airlines fell asleep and missed their landing while flying from Sudan to Ethiopia on Monday, according to a report from aviation news site Aviation Herald. Passenger flight ET-343, a Boeing 737-800, was traveling from Khartoum to Addis Ababa, when the pilots nodded off and flew past the runway, continuing their route. Air traffic control tried to contact the pilots multiple times, but could not get a hold of them. When the pilots flew past the landing point, autopilot disengaged, sending an alarm that woke them up. This is according to Aviation Herald. Uh, wow. Wow. Thank goodness that worked itself out. Good grief. Um, once awake, the pilots rerouted the plane back to Addis Ababa Bowl International Airport, where they safely landed. 25 minutes later, which can be seen in the flight map from FlightAware. Wow, that's crazy. I, I, <laughs> you know, I feel like there should be an earlier warning system for that sort of thing than the autopilot sort of realizing, holy crap, we overshot. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. You know, I, I feel like there's there's something else I could that could have been sort of done there just on the off chance. I'm not a pilot. I don't even know any pilots. There's it, it just stands to reason that in that kind of in that kind of high stress, high stakes line of work where you're usually doing a lot of traveling for long periods of time, you know, and last I checked, pilots don't get paid very much. You know, I was I was almost going to say very much what I would argue that job is worth. They really don't. And neither do the flight attendants, you know, the stewards that uh, stewardesses, those sort of things. They. They, they don't. So it only stands to reason that, you know, they had to push themselves and push themselves. Um, it, it's 
it only stands to reason that physical exertion, physical exhaustion is going to come into play in some form or another and lives are at stake. You know, let's, let's, let's try and put some more safeguards in place there. That's, that's crazy. It's such a good thing that they managed to survive that in one piece. Uh, Ms. D says, that is one reason I am chicken to fly. Pilots are human and humans get sleepy. Yeah, that's a simpler way of phrasing it. <laughs> Thank you for the comment, Ms. D. Let's uh, move on to the next topic here. Once again, thanks so much for watching Weird News Live right here on Weekend Showcase. We're just rolling right along. We're already about a third of the way through, roughly a third, coming up on halfway here. Let's move on. This is now from Ripley's, posted uh, four days ago, 17th. That time, a scientist dug secret tunnels under D.C. for exercise. And once again, this and all of our weird news topics for tonight are posted in the description at the bottom of this video on the YouTube version of this video. I'm not sure if it went through on Facebook, but we do have all the links up on the on the YouTube description if you're curious to read further on anything. Uh, so here we are. In 1924, a delivery truck fell victim to a crack in Earth's foundation right behind Pelham Courts in Washington, D.C., submerging slightly into the ground beneath its tires. The Pelham Court's manager and janitor investigated and discovered the unlikely culprit, a maze of connected hidden tunnels. They were built tall and wide enough for a human to effortlessly walk through them. An architect reported that the tunnels were constructed with precision and care. Da, 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 da. One interesting discovery was a collection of German newspapers lining the ceilings lit by electric torches. Hmm. Some, saw, some thought they were deserted sewage tunnels, while others theorized it was a hiding space for German spies or bootleggers. I don't know why there would be sewage tunnels. Like, who would build underground tunnels transporting sewage, but then line the inside of it on the ceiling with newspapers? Like, what would be the purpose of that? I don't understand what that would be for exactly. If anybody has any suggestions or, or theories or uh, ideas on that, uh, drop it in the comments feed. Shoot, I'm I'm curious about what you all think about this. This is a uh, hmm. That was weird. Let me see. So here's okay. Here we are. This is I guess I guess they found the actual reasoning behind this. Harrison Dyer, a former Smithsonian Institute entomologist, took full responsibility after he had his fun hearing what people had to say about these mysterious tunnels. All right, I guess I should have waited a little bit longer for y'all to type your. Uh, theories in this before reading it farther through. See, this is what happens when we do, when this is live, and I've never pre-screened any of these, so it's like, uh, yeah, I could have read ahead and found out there was a little bit, uh, they actually went ahead and provided the answer for that mystery, but, uh, anyway. His reason for the secret passageways, it was as simple as exercise. He looked at tunnel digging as not only a hobby, but a way to get his body up and moving after work. He admitted to working on these tunnels for upwards of 10 years, from 1906 to 1916. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Um, okay, so this is this this looks like the sort of thing that maybe should be used as a location for the third national treasure movie, perhaps, which is in which is in planning stages right now. If I remember right, they're doing they're wrapping up, if not having already finished right now, principal photography for the National Treasure series that's actually coming to Disney Plus. There's a spin-off. Um, TV series that's going directly to streaming there and there is a third movie that's being actively worked on right now this just looks like something that would be perfect within that within that franchise in some form or fashion I don't know but that's just me um, what about y'all are you looking forward to another National Treasure thing do y'all have y'all seen those movies well would you explore a tunnel like this you know with absolutely no real indication necessarily that there aren't any like indigenous you know, animals or critters that might be using that, those tunnels as a habitat. I don't know, because that's what would throw me off, basically. Like, I am not the exploratory type to just crawl down in a tunnel like that and go exploring at random like that. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to swipe left on that whole idea. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Anyway, that's just me. Let's move on. Uh, we're rolling through the, the, the list of weird news topics here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left before the top of the hour. We're doing weird news uh, reactions and commentary feedback right now live on Weekend Showcase. Thanks so much for tuning in on uh, YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, basically everywhere right now, Twitch. Um, feel free to hit the like button, smash that notification bell, and uh, shoot us a comment in the live chat, and we can put it on air. I mean, waiting to get some feedback from y'all. Don't be a stranger. Don't be shy. I won't bite. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and move on. Next topic 
on the docket here. This is going back over to the mirror. Uh, furious woman angrily demands mom cut off her tattoo because she copied the design. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. This was posted four days ago. Let's see. Choosing a tattoo is a lifelong commitment as the design you decide on stays etched on your skin forever. Many of those who are eager to get inked up will agonize for months or even years over the perfect placement and style in order to create something that is unique and special to them. Yeah, I can totally see that. Um, and I've talked with people who have tattoos before about this this sort of thing. Like, it's it's a serious commitment. That's not to be taken lightly. Um, let's see. It's a contra... Oh, yeah. Others are less worried about the originality of their design and take inspiration from other tattoos and artists' work. It's a controversial topic in the world of tattooing as spats can unfold over copycat designs and rip-offs of original works. Mm -mm. Okay, so Charlie Buckham, a 23-year-old beautician from Gateshead, Tynan Ware, I don't know where that is, recently shared a picture of herself with her tattoo on show. She was stunned at the vile stream of Facebook messages that followed, all sent from someone called Evie. The young woman quickly spotted that she was friends with Evie on Facebook, but this was merely down to them being from the same area rather than an actual friendship. Evie branded Furious Evie branded Charlie as an unoriginal copycat before resorting to insults about her appearance calling her names that I'm not going to repeat on this stream, and claiming that she ruined the tattoo. Hmm. Charlie was honest about the inspiration behind her tattoo and admits to getting the ink after seeing the design shared by Evie's tattoo artist on Facebook. She went even further by saying she doesn't care that they have identical designs. However, on closer inspection, Charlie soon realized that Evie's tattoo wasn't an original design sketch just for her, but rather a copycat of another design that was shared on Instagram a year before Evie got inked. So this is the tattoo design here. Uh, let me see here. Okay, this is the design. Um, looks like a some sort of uh, like a flower with some un some uh, I almost said unique, but some special sort of like embroidering kind of like design with what looked like Roman numerals along the top on the left and right side. Um, apparently, that's been used in at least two other places that we know of here. Judging by the way that this topic was being described here by the mirror, this per this particular publication. It, it's really it, it's really unnerving when you know tattoo cult, when tattoo culture starts taking these negative turns but it stands to reason that at some point it probably would depending on the personalities involved depending on who who comes across photographic evidence of somebody else using their design and especially if somebody winds up basically plagiarizing that design and the design had some sort of deep personal significance to the previous person who the design was for or maybe even meant for you know if it's um if the design is meant to be in a reference to, say, a, a family member or a friend or maybe a child, somebody who maybe even died, you know, and uh, or maybe just something a little bit less uh, significant in emotional resonance, like um, like an autograph, like like some people sometimes get tattoos of famous people's autographs, you know, like I've seen some instances of people doing that and having that tattooed on their body, like permanently, basically, I guess, because that's just how deep their fandom goes. I mean, that's more power to you. It's your body. It's your business. And presumably, if it's like something, if it's an autograph from somebody else, presumably you got permission to do that. But I, I don't. Yeah, this, this, this always sort of like irks me when we see instances of people sort of taking that level of territorialism to an unnecessary type of extreme. You know, it can happen. It does happen. It's really unfortunate when it does. But uh, I mean, I don't know what's. What, those of you who are watching, what's do you have any tattoos? What are your favorite tattoos? Have you gotten uh, any such uh, comments and judgment and, and shade thrown at you from other people from the tattoos that you've gotten and shared on social media? I mean, how, how widespread is this sort of thing? Share your comments, share your experiences, and um, let us know in the comments. We might be able to put it on the air here. Uh, let's move on. Next item on the docket is from Huffington Post. And once again, thanks so much for watching Weird News. Hit that like button and the subscription button and the notification bell if you haven't already. Um, we're really trying to grow this brand up and really try to build a community around this stuff here. Oh, here we go. This is from Brain Spaz. No tats for me, not that brave. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm with you. I don't have any ink or piercings, so uh, that's that's all well above my pay grade, personally. But uh, thanks for the feedback, Brain Spaz. Um, what about anybody else who's watching? Do you have any other uh, feedback on that or any other topics for tonight? Feel free to post it in the chat and we can put it up on the air. Next item is from Huffington Post. Car thief who hid from police inside giant teddy bear learns his fate. This is posted uh, 
Oh, goodness, 10 days ago? Good grief, how'd that make it in? We usually aim for topics within the last seven days. But, okay, uh, well, we'll run it. Let's see, a suspected car thief in Manchester, England, apparently found the idea of being arrested unbearable. Ha! Huh? So he reportedly attempted to hide inside a five-foot teddy bear. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Joshua Dobson's attempt at being a master of disguise didn't work, and now he will have to see if he can bear time behind bars. Wow, the puns. The puns. Ugh, ouch, the puns. The 18-year-old has been wanted by Greater Manchester Police since May when he allegedly stole a car and didn't pay to fuel it up, according to the BBC. Oof, ouch. Uh, that'll do it. Dobson managed to elude capture until July when police were searching a house in Rochdale, and noticed what a force spokesman described as a large bear breathing. Wow. Dobson was taken into custody and charged with the alleged crimes. He was sentenced to nine months in a young offender's institution last week, according to the Metro. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and okay, so there's, and the, it looks like the police department posted about this on Facebook with what the story is describing as pretty unbearable puns. Quote, he's now stuffed behind bars after being sentenced last week for a theft of a motor vehicle, driving while disqualified, and making off from a petrol station without payment. Hopefully he has a bearable time inside. Rimshot. If we had our stream deck route working properly right now, there would be a good amount of rimshot uh, sound effects right there. But anyway, I'm surprised that this is... Like, what kind of... How, how much did he have to sort of squeeze himself into that into this bear in order to hide like that. Good grief. I, I, I'm trying to wrap my mind around like how much of a contortionist one would have to be in order to physically hide inside a five foot bear, you know, like, yeah, you you can, you can squeeze yourself down a little bit, but you have to sort of navigate yourself amongst all that stuffing and, you know, whatever else might be in there, you know, and, and you got to make sure that you have ample breathing ability. That's the other thing. Like, where are the air holes in this? Did he have, like, a really large sort of straw going out the bottom, basically, to be able to breathe effectively? Because that's just asking for suffocation. You know, I don't... That's that's crazy. This is probably the weirdest thing that I've seen all night so far, basically. It's just trying to hide from law enforcement inside a gigantic teddy bear. I don't know. But anyway, what do you all think about this or any of the other topics that we've been talking about so far tonight? Smash that like button, hit the notification bell, and drop us a comment. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Next topic on the docket is from National Public Radio. It was posted, <laughs> again, a little bit uh, earlier in the week. Let's see. August 16, eh, that's within a week, yeah. A suspect in Oregon tried to flee the scene in an excavator. A man wanted for Grand Theft Auto... <laughs> That reminds me, I gotta boot up GTA 5 again. It's been a long time. A man wanted for Grand Theft Auto tried to make a getaway on a construction vehicle. He made it about a half a mile with deputies walking behind him until they made an arrest. And there's a transcript here. Uh yeah, that's that's that looks like it, basically. There's a there's an audio clip here, 27 seconds worth of audio clip. I can try and play a little bit of this. There's no video to the, attached to this, unfortunately, but I can't play the full thing. Let me see if I can get like five seconds of this. Good morning, I'm Steve Inskeep. You imagine police chases with sirens and speeding cars, but this is the sound of what deputies in Washington County, Oregon call the world's slowest police pursuit. Yeah, no sirens. A man wanted for Grand Theft Auto tried to get away yeah, yeah, and that, I already read that part. That was a weird sort of sound effect. Did y'all hear that? There was a weird sort of like, um, it was almost like a, a gentler sounding fingernails on a chalkboard kind of sound effect. I'm not sure if that was basically due to the, the quality of the audio that was attached to this piece, but I don't know. That was, uh, uh, that, that was, that was a bit much there. I guess that's just supposed to be the sound of the construction equipment in particular, maybe, I guess. I don't know. That was weird. Whatever. Um, we'll we'll just put this under the subject uh, the subject area of whatever I guess, whatever comma I guess maybe, or hashtag whatever I guess. I don't know. But anyway, all I can all I can imagine is like, or all I can say about this is I can't imagine trying to flee from anybody in construction equipment. That stuff is designed to move slowly. You 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 can't you can't be serious. Is basically my reaction to that. But anyway. Whatever. Let's move on. We have one, two, three, four, five more topics left before the top of the hour. 
Let's see. This next one is from UPI. Massive Atlas moth found in the United States for the first time. I've never heard of this before. This is posted August 18. What is an Atlas moth? Wow. Uh, okay. I don't know that I would use my hand for a size comparison. If that's really supposed to be... Okay, wait a minute. Unless... Uh, unless he happened to catch this photograph at the exact moment that the moth was sort of flying above his hand, like like the um, like Michael Keaton's Batwing plane in Batman eighty nine, like when it flies up and sort of forms like a bat signal up against juxtaposed against the moon just above the cloud line. I don't know if y'all saw that movie, but that's what this looks like to me. Unless the moth did a Michael Keaton and flew above the clouds in front of the moon like that, but like in front of his building. You can't use your hand as a size comparison point for something like this. You know, uh, it's it's just the depth of field, you know? It's it's lines converge toward a singular point in the horizon. We have depth, you know? I don't know. That's kind of what strikes me as sort of the obvious sort of conclusion to draw about that. That's not an accurate sort of thing to do there. Um, let's see. The department said a University of Washington professor snapped photos when he spotted the gargantuan moth perched on the exterior wall of his Bellevue garage July 7, and state officials examined the photos and confirmed the insect was an atlas moth, one of the world's largest species of moth. Atlas moths are native to the tropics and have never been documented in the United States. Hmm. Sven Spitziger, the Agriculture Department's managing entomologist, said in the news release, quote, This is a gee whiz type of insect because it is so large. Even if you aren't on the lookout for insects, this is the type that people get their phones out and take a picture of. They are that striking, end quote. Researchers said they are now trying to determine if the moth is part of a population in Washington. They're asking anyone who spots a similar insect to report it to pestprogram at agr.wa.gov. What's the craziest uh, insect that you've come across, basically, that you hopefully have some photographic evidence of? I don't know, hopefully. Uh, and also, hopefully, you didn't get stung by it. I don't know, because you would have to get pretty close to get that photo. But anyway, hey, what do you got? You got any stories? Uh, shoot us a, a little message about it in the live chat. And don't forget to smash that like button and the notification bell. Um, and if you want to go ahead and do a, do a submission into this program as well, the, the PEST program email address um, that these uh, researchers are trying to collect information about, um, the link, the email address is posted in the story. And the link to the story is, as usual, in the description down below at the bottom of this video over on YouTube. So... Again, I don't know if the description information made it all the way over to the other platforms because uh, there's a lot of it. We we post a lot of information about all the topics that we cover, but uh, it's definitely all on YouTube, which is uh, they're available for you at your convenience. So you're welcome. <laughs> no need to say it. It's okay. You're welcome. Uh, this is from Brain Spaz. Dang, that's a big moth. That would really creep me out. Yeah, definitely not a uh, an insect fan necessarily. Uh, Brain Spaz noted. Uh, noted and understood there it, it's yeah this would definitely throw me off and i i wouldn't even honestly i wouldn't even take out my phone for that at least from that distance like if it's if i could get clear to the other side of the driveway before i take that picture and like take it but without it being so grainy and low resolution because of the distance you know that it wasn't worth taking the picture in the first place if i could do that I would happily do that. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and bounce most likely. It's funny that I'm it's funny that we're talking about this tonight cuz actually I think it was like yesterday or the day before a dragonfly landed on the antenna of my car and like I actually took a picture of it, but you know, it was and I was basically right next to it, but it's a dragonfly. I know it's not fatal. I know that like the dragonflies who live in my area, like they're not that big of a deal, but this is different. This is taken up practically like a whole window of your house in terms of size it looks like so i don't know it's that's that's a bit much for me that's i'm gonna put that under above my pay grade basically i think is the right way to categorize that anyway let's move on next item on the docket we have this and three others we're at the a little bit past the bottom of the hour right now uh, this is from UPI. Texas dad wrangles alligator before daughter's first day of school. Wow. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll that'll do it, man. That's a uh, that's one way to um, hunt a crocodile, I guess. You know, 
since uh, the real crocodile, the other, the main crocodile hunter, unfortunately, had uh, long since passed away many years ago. Um, this is posted August 17. A Missouri City, Texas man was forced to wrangle an alligator after it blocked his front door ahead of his daughter's first day of school. Mike Trin, who owns a seafood restaurant when he is not wrestling wildlife, told Houston's KPRC-TV that his daughter found the alligator right outside of their home, preventing her from getting in the car to go to school. Trin told the news station, quote, I woke up this morning groggy. I'm ready to just take my kids to school. It's my daughter's first day in middle school. So she runs back saying, Dad, there's an alligator in the front door. I'm thinking she's joking, not wanting to go to school. I say, just stop. We're going to school today. Just stop it. End quote. Upon further investigation, though, Trin found his daughter was telling the truth. There was indeed a large alligator laying on their driveway. Trin called multiple wildlife rescue facilities, but none of them were able to make it out to tend to the alligator, he said. Determined to get his daughter to school, Trin said that he channeled the late Steve Irwin, whose show The Crocodile Hunter he would watch consistently to figure out a solution. Knowing that covering the alligator's eyes would help calm it down, Trin threw a towel over the animal's head. Wow, I didn't know that. But then I barely watched that show. So, wow, hmm. He said, first one, quote, first one missed, second one kind of a miss, and you could see the alligator was angry, its mouth was open, end quote. Wow. Following this, he was able to get around the alligators to get his daughter to school, but when he returned home, the creature was still there. Trin then held the alligator's mouth closed while his other daughter, just 19 years old, taped the reptile's powerful jaws closed with duct tape. Trin and a friend then drove the alligator to a nearby pond and released it into the wild. Okay, so there you go. It doesn't look like there's uh, anything else there in terms of injury for either the the alligator or the people involved. So that's that's definitely a positive right there. Good grief. Um, yeah, that's, that's crazy. According to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the American alligator is a commonly found reptile in the state. Yeah, I commonly think of Florida. Uh, and I'm sure most people do when it comes to the idea of where our gators commonly found. Like, nobody's going to think of Texas. Like, if you were to go ahead and ask, do a family feud survey, you know, Steve Harvey's going to turn that thing around. Number one answer is going to be Florida. We all know this. But Texas? Texas? I don't know. Do we have any vis do, you have, do we have any uh, audience members out there from Texas who maybe, like, have seen this sort of thing before who can corroborate this piece of information? Feel free to drop us a comment if you're not with us live. But if you are, please drop us in a live chat. I uh, Drop us a note in the live chat. I'd be happy to read that off here. It's like, that's that's incredible to me. Good grief. Um, like, a little bit <laughs> far from home there. Or, well, I guess at an alternative home, really, if you want to be, I guess, technically correct about it, since apparently there's... There are there's an indigenous alligator population in Texas that was beyond me to know beforehand. Good grief. Um, anyway, let's move on. Next item on the docket. This is from the mirror. Let's see. McDonald's denies claims its burgers are shrinking, but customers aren't convinced. Yeah, I got to agree. I got to agree there. This is this is one of those things that sort of strikes you as a consumer as roughly common sense, just basic observations. And this doesn't necessarily limit itself to fast food either. Like uh, there's a brand of chocolate chip cookie that I used to have a lot when I was when I was a kid. I'm not going to say the name, the brand name here, but I vividly remember the, the size of the cookie being about this big. It was, it was, it was sizable, basically. It could last you for, for a minute, depending on, you know, how much you wanted of the cookie in that moment, obviously, but you had a lot to work with. Nowadays, if you were to go to like a convenience store, roughly, and you and you get that exact same brand, because that brand is still available to this day. Now, the size of the cookie is about like this. That's crazy to me. And it'll still be the same price. Like, okay, say what you will about inflation, but this was happening before 2022, before 2020, before, you know, all this stuff started happening with, you know, the pandemic and supply chains doing what they're doing now. It's... Uh, this is, it's always upsetting, you know, when, when that sort of thing happens, but okay, this is starting to really make serious headlines here. It seems, uh, let's see, try to get some more information here. All right. The debate arose after shoppers in Australia noticed a significant size difference between the filet of fish, McChicken and beef burgers, dubbing the former as kid sized, taking the Facebook to reveal their findings. One commenter said, have McDonald's filet of fish always been this small? I don't remember it being mini kid size like this. 
Others chimed in to agree with the claim, giving further examples of disappointing portion sizes. One Facebook user responded, quote, just like the quarter pounder got its name as it was a quarter pound of beef, it's barely that now, end quote. Another added, quote, inflated price, dot, 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 deflated goods, end quote. That's very well said, to be honest. The super small burgers have been scrutinized carefully by consumers, with many claiming that the patty itself has got thinner. One person claimed, quote, we had Big Macs last week. Not only have the buns shrunk, but the meat patties were so thin we could see literally through them was as if they had sliced them in half. Good grief. Wow. Yeah, this is one of those this is one of those things where like <sighs> good grief. How do I There's really no other way to characterize it other than what I just read off and then what I said at the beginning, quite frankly. Cause it's like you want value for your money, right? And you know what you've ordered. We've all had at most people most people by the time they are old enough to make their own order at like one of these fast food places, they know what they like. They know what they don't like. They know what they're going there for. And they know what's in a name. You can't go around calling something a quarter pounder if it's not a quarter pound. I don't, I, I don't know. It, this is like, this, this is one of those things where, uh, uh, oh, hold on. Here's Ms. D. Everything is getting smaller and costing more. Yes, fish burgers are definitely smaller. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take your word for it. I don't, I don't generally eat fillet of fish. I haven't really paid that much attention to that part of their menu. Um, talking about McDonald's in particular, but yeah, it, it's we, we've all gone to various fast food places. I don't want to single them out too much here, uh, more than I already have to by reading this off. But it's like, at what point do you change the name? That's what I'm really trying to talk about here. At what point does it just become straight up false advertising when the portion sizes for the same value or for the same cost to the consumer, they get smaller and smaller over time to the point where the customer base itself can actually point it out, do a size comparison on social media, and take you to task as a company, as a corporation, for charging them the same amount of money anyway. Just, you may as well at the very least change the name if there's just no going back. If this is the new normal, be transparent and honest about it. People are still going to buy burgers. People are going to still buy their filet of fish. People are going to still get what they're going to get, but at least don't be disingenuous about it, you know? I think we can all, wherever you stand on the on the spectrum between consumer and producer, I'm pretty sure we can all agree to that. We all want our money's worth, and we don't want to be misled about what our money is worth, you know? I don't know. This just seems common sense to me. What do you think about this? Smash that like button, hit the notification bell, and drop us a chat. You know, you know how it is. You know what we do. Uh, we have two topics left here before we go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, let's see. This next one is from Huffington Post. Papa John's launched a weird new craving and pizza lovers aren't having it. The new menu strips Papa John's pizza of one key ingredient. This was posted, this was posted on HuffPost about four days ago. Uh, let's see. The chain announced last week that its latest dish, Papa Bowls, <clears throat> didn't need the foundation for pizza pies. The bowls would include toppings for a number of pizza types, including garden veggie, Italian meats trio, and chicken alfredo, Minus the round crust to hold them. So you're making a pizza without the pizza. Hang on a second. Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Um, I don't I don't believe that they're actually following through with this. I had read something a little bit about this um, last week that Papa John's was doing something like this. Uh, just basically making a bowl of toppings and not putting it to pizza as part of what that menu item consists of. You know, okay, it's different, but almost to a completely unnecessary extent. You make pizza, right? We've known you for 30 plus years as a pizza place. If you're going to sell other stuff other than pizza, at least have it be sort of at least have it be pizza adjacent in the sense of like be other Italian food, you know, like, um, like, uh, like some pizza, I, I think it was Domino's was the last time I got, I got one of these from there. They had a bowl of, or a, a platter, like a big fo uh, foil tray. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a tray of, I'm trying to remember. I think it was lasagna. I think I may be remembering wrong. It's been years, but they had stuff other than pizza or breadsticks and it was at least Italian food adjacent, you know, so it didn't feel that much out of the norm to order something like that 
from what is otherwise a pizza exclusive venue from what is otherwise a pretty much pizza only uh, establishment, or at least as far as the public perception of it. You know, uh, this is uh, this is nuts. This is nuts, guys. I don't know. Um, this is okay. Scott Rodriguez, the chain senior vice president of strategy and product innovation, says, "Quote: Our signature crust continues to be a beloved favorite, but we know that sometimes customers crave something different." End quote. Yeah, but like, you're taking all the fun out of the pizza. I mean, if you're gonna do something like, okay. You remember when stuffed crust pizza first came out? Remember when some of those commercials would come out advertising the appeal of going with the stuffed crust route as opposed to the regularly designed pizza? And you could you, you could justify it by taking taking the pizza crust and sort of like eating it backwards. Remember, that's how they marketed it. You could eat the pizza backwards. And it, that was it was different. But hang on. Here's a Becca Cardenas. Hey. Uh, I work at Domino's. There's pasta, salad, and chicken products. You probably had pasta, <laughs> lol. <laughs> yeah, pasta. That that's that sounds about right. Thank you for that, Becca. I didn't know. Nice. You work at Domino's. Um, yeah. Thank you for that uh, inside inf uh, inside information there, Becca. Really appreciate the comment and the and the like. Um, yeah. It, it's. I've never had a I've never had a salad from Domino's, uh, or from any pizza place while I'm at it. But uh, but yeah, the pasta was uh, the pasta was good. But again, that was years ago. Um, hopefully, it's still good. I don't know. Might have to try that again sometime. Maybe I don't know. But moving on, um, <laughs> trying very carefully not to do hard endorsements. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, like I was saying, if you if you want to do something different, you know, don't take the fun. My humble opinion is don't take the fun out of eating pizza. You know, don't, don't, don't take the fun out of eating Italian. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like the idea of getting a whole tray, a whole pasta tray. And basically, hang on a second. Be uh, Becca, once again, saying there's no such thing as funless pizza. But, but Becca, like I, this is, <laughs> it's not even pizza anymore. Like we're talking about Papa John's is doing, uh, it, wait a minute did we do this yeah papa bowls i don't have a i don't have a picture i don't have a picture un unfortunately in front of this right now but um maybe this is something hang on let me try and uh let me try and put this up here in this uh tab maybe there's a picture in front of this here yeah here we are okay so these are the these are the new pizza bowls that they're putting up now like they took all of the dis all of the discernible sort of visual characteristics of what a pizza is and just put it in a bowl. Just put it in a tray, like a pasta tray, ordinarily. Uh, why even Why even go to the pizza place at that point? I don't know. Brain spaz saying, pizza without the pizza bread slash crust is not pizza. Thank you. That's that's where I'm at, you know? Uh, I, I don't know. This is just me. What do y'all think about this? Like, feel free to drop some other thoughts in the comments feed. Like, was this, um, w would you, would you go get, something that was this much not pizza from a pizza place and pay pizza cost theoretically for what is not pizza. I don't know. I sound like, I don't know. I sound like Andy Rooney right now, basically like doing a tirade at the end of 60 minutes, uh, back in the day. But, um, it, it, I don't know. Let's move on. Let's move on. This, this, this topic is actually making me hungry. I got to have dinner after we, uh, after I wrap this show up anyway, let's move on. We have one more topic. Uh, before we wrap up for the night here, let's see. This is again from Huffington Post. Seal bursts into home through pet flap and temporarily ousts the family cat. This was posted yesterday on Huffington Post. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's see. Phil Ross of Mount Manganui. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this word. Hang on a second. I don't know if y'all can see this. M-A-U-N-G-A-N-U-I. Manganui. Okay, told the Guardian that his family found a young fur seal inside their house Wednesday morning, exploring different rooms and lounging on the couch. Ross, who coincidentally is a marine biologist, was not home when the seal was discovered. His wife Jen had left for about an hour to go to the gym and stumbled across and stumbled across the surprising visitor when she came back. The big joke is that this is really the only family emergency where it would be useful to have a marine biologist in the house. Ross told the Guardian, "I really missed my time to shine." 
It's not totally clear why the seal went inside, but Ross suspects that his cat Coco was outside and attempted to defend the home turf against the, uh, pinniped? Is that a word? Pinniped? P-I-N-N-I-P-E-D? Anyone who's watching, feel free to look that up and post the, the definition in the, in the live chat here. I'm curious about the definition of that word, pinniped. Uh, let's see. Um, Ross continued, quote, Obviously the seal wasn't as intimidated as some dogs are, so Coco must have bolted around the side of the house into the cat flap, and the seal must have followed her, end quote. Let's see. Do we have a video from this anywhere? Uh, well, there's photos on Facebook. I don't know if this is going to actually reveal that without demanding that we log in. Oh, here we go. There is something here. Let's see. Here we are. Wow. <laughs> yep, that's uh, H. S-I-C, Head Seal in Charge, I think is the acronym for that. Good grief. Um, uh, what, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what, what, is a, uh, what does a seal do when it finds its way into your house like this and the cat can't really do much to defend the property? Uh, whatever the seal wants, pretty much, I think is the interpretation of that joke to use. I think roughly. I'm trying to remember how that original joke goes about like a 500 pound gorilla or something like that was originally the um, the subject material for that punchline originally. But anyway, I don't know. I'm trying to sort of make it contextually relevant from here, but that's the best I got for this anyway. And this <laughs> Salem over here ain't having it. This black cat. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That's hilarious right there, I gotta say. Um, but anyway... Let me see. Did we have any information about... Uh... Okay, so Ross told Fox TV stations, quote, it's really common for young seals to end up on unusual bits of coastline at this time of year. The young ones are starting to get weaned, going out on their own, and like most teenagers, can make bad decisions about where they end up. I see. So, um, yeah, that'll, that'll explain that. <laughs> um, I can't imagine reacting any uh, what what my reaction would be to a wild animal like that first of all i don't live close enough to water for that sort of thing to happen but I, this is like i can't imagine i can't imagine my reaction to that other than holy crap where's my cell phone i got to call animal control like you know how do we how do we get this how do we get this thing back to its natural habitat as quickly and peacefully as possible and please don't break any of my stuff you know <laughs> i don't know Anyway, that's just that's just my immediate reaction to that. Oh, Ms. D with the definition. Thank you very much, Ms. D. Pinniped means a carnivorous aquatic mammal of the order Pinnipedia, such as a seal or walrus. Hmm, I did not know that. Thank you for the definition, Ms. D, and thank you for the like and uh, and the sub, which obviously would have to have happened beforehand. Ms. D is a regular here on this channel in the comments feed. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. Um, and that's basically going to wrap up uh, the show for the most part for tonight, we have, we, we've talked about a lot of different topics tonight. Good grief. Um, what were, what was your favorite topic tonight? I was, I was most, <laughs> I think my favorite tonight has to be a toss up quite frankly, between the, uh, the seal topic, the one, the last one that we just talked about and the, the, the burglar who tried to hide in the gigantic five foot, um, the teddy bear. The, the burglar who tried the, the the criminal who tried to hide in the teddy bear and but got busted anyway because the teddy bear was seen breathing like really like how I don't know how much I don't know how long you expected to be able to hide from law enforcement in that but dude ugh. anyway whatever um that's a wrap for this week's headlines those are my favorite topics tonight what was yours what what was what was your favorite tonight drop a comment down below to continue the convo Feel free to visit us at Weekend Showcase on all major social media platforms or hit us up at Linktree, linktr.ee slash Weekend Showcase, like in the description to see it all in one place. And we will see you right here this coming Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific for another brand new trailer reaction show right here on Weekend Showcase. Um, oh, we have a comment from Brain Spaz. I like the funny one about the crook trying to escape in a slow tractor. <laughs> yeah, I wish we had a video for that. We didn't have, we couldn't have a video for that, unfortunately, but like, it's one of those things where I imagined it was probably something like, um, 
I don't know if y'all saw the movie Monsters University. Uh, there was uh, th- that Pixar movie. I think Disney Plus still has it. The post credit scene on that has this uh, this slug character who was always late for class. And he was like running and running and running, but he's a slug. So he's running like this at this exact pace. And it's like, I can completely imagine, you know, the, the, the crook trying to get away using the construction equipment and it basically being at that pace. And the officers are like, you can't possibly be serious trying to get away from law enforcement right now. This is the, uh, trying to lead us on a slow speed chase using construction equipment. Seriously? Come on. Come on. Step out of the step out of the uh, steam shovel, whatever it was. I forgot whatever <laughs> what the type of pro- uh, construction equipment that was. But anyway, whatever. Anyway, um, that's about it. That's all we got for tonight. Once again, thank you for tuning into Weekend Showcase Weird News Live. My name is Don. Uh, I hope to see you on this coming Friday, eight thirty Eastern, five thirty Pacific, for another weird news uh, for another trailer reaction show. Hope to see you then. For now. Please be safe. I hope you had a great weekend. Showcase you later. Have a good night. Later.